Welcome to the brand new Sketchwork TV How Did They Do That Show with me, Justin Heesman. Sketchwork TV. This week we're going to be looking at the snow globe effect from our Christmas video. So let's take a look at that effect right now and then we'll see how to create it. Uh -huh. Merry Christmas to one and all from Sketchwork TV. Okay, so first thing we need to do is to create the three composite shots, uh, which we'll use one for the base, one for the globe, and one for the footage. So we're going to go new composite shot. I'm going to call this one base, and that's all. That's all okay. Um, we want to make the width and the height the same for this, so it's a square. So we're going to make it 1280 by 1280. That's because the footage I'm using is in 720p, which is 1280 by 720. So we want to make the maximum to make it square, which is OK. OK that. There's our base. OK, so uh, first of all, we need to do is create a new plane, make it a cyan color. And we'll call this one uh, base and create. There we go. We want to scale it down. So we open the transform controls and we want to scale it right down to about one sixth of the size of the uh, the actual screen. So and you want to position it in about just below the center point it's about there, which is good. Okay, now we need to add in a color gradient color gradient drop that onto the plane and uh, I'll go over here Let's look at some of these okay we want to change the start point position to about minus nine by 420 uh, the start colour, we want it to be about a nice yellow kind of colour, so we'll give that 170. Actually, a red colour, actually. And we'll change the end colour to be a nice yellow. So we've got a red to a yellow there. Change the blend mode to none. And you want to bump the opacity all the way up to 100%. And you can play around with the uh, the position here. To get whatever you know the gradient you want on on your base layer. Next thing we need to do is add another new layer and add some text. And we'll call this well, text layer. That do. Okay, so we've got the new text layer and put your text on there. So, hello, everyone. Give it whatever text you want and change some of the options in here. So you can give it the right size you want. And then finally, we can position that onto our layer, onto our, our base. Okay, so... The next thing we need to do is we need to warp the base so it actually warps round. So to do this, it's a bit of a bodge way around it, but we can add a new grade, drop onto that grade, a fisheye warp. Okay, and we need to dial down these properties and we want to bump the amount up to 100, up to 100. We're going to change wrap X to no, wrap Y to no, to no. And then you can move the center position um, on the Y axis just so you can get to you get a nice kind of base looking. There we go. That'll do fine for now. OK, so there's there's our base. Uh, the last thing we can do, we can add another 
uh, go to the grade layer and if we add a glow to that and just put the, the intensity to about 0.4 so it's not too not too bright and that's it that's it for the base Okay, now we are on to the footage. So you create yourself a brand new comp and call it footage. And you want to drop whatever your uh, media is. You want to, uh, you know, your live action stuff. You want to go in the globe. Uh, in my case, I've got a chimney, which I've already rotoscoped around. Just drew around it with the freehand tool. And um, I'm going to drop on my live footage, which I've already green screened and keyed, which is uh, my green screen footage. And I've keyed it already. Um, if you want to you know, learn a bit more about green screening, there's loads of tutorials on there or just give me a shout and we'll go into that a bit more detail. But there we go. So we've got me and Dean popping our heads out of the chimney. Great stuff. Right. The next thing we need to do is add our snow to the scene. And we do that by going into the effects and we're going to add in a brand new particle simulator. And that will add a camera. Great. So say yes to that. Okay, first off, particle simulator, we just spew a load of dots out the top of the chimney. It looks like I'm throwing up, but I'm not. Right, what we need to do is go in and change some of these settings. So under your emitter, an emitter, go into shape, and you want to change that to be a cube, and then dial down shape again. And we want to change a few things in here. So first of all, we need to move the position of the, you know, where it's throwing it all out. So change the Y position to about 576, and that'll push it right up into the air. Uh, the width, we want to up the width an awful lot. So let's change that to about 1370. And uh, we want to give it a bit more depth as well. So let's give it a depth of about 940. And that way, the you know it's going to come down in a minute, but it's uh, and it's going to give it a bit more depth and uh, a lot more width on there. Okay, under the particle system, so if we go down to particle system, particle system, and general. We want to up the particles per second to around about one hundred. Gives a lot more particles to play with, and under the particle system appearance. Um, we want to change the texture. I use a texture called Circle Blur, which uh, was on Josh's uh, teleport tutorial. So you can download that from there by watching that. Um, if not, just uh, use, use the default one. But this one gives it a nice bit of a faded look around the outside, which is pretty cool. And you want to add the change the blend mode to add, which gives it a bit more brightness there. Under the uh, here and we don't need anything under the variation under movement then uh, give the life because one second just isn't going to cut it give it to about 15 seconds you want to change the scale this might be a bit weird but you want to change it to zero which makes them all disappear but don't worry we'll get around that in a minute change the speed to about 100 because uh, snow is not heavy and you want to change the bounce and friction to both be zero like so. Now, under the movement variation, this is where we want to change the scale to about 35%. There we go. And uh, there's our particle system floating down a lot better than it was before. Now, you notice at the beginning, there's no snow whatsoever. So you want to grab your particle and move it all the way over till it near enough fills the screen and then just drag the end to the end of your comp shot. That way, as soon as it starts, it's going to be snowing straight away. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now, the last thing you want to do, now we've got the 3D camera, we've got the 3D particles. Um, we want to put our chimney and our footage into 3D space as well. And if you look at the screen there, you'll notice when I turn it to 3D, some of it will disappear. plane and what that is is because you put the footage into 3d space some of the particles are now going to be going behind us which is great 
which is just what we want. Makes it gives it a little bit more of a, uh, you know, a more real kind of look to it, and makes it that little bit more convincing, which is pretty cool. Obviously, you, what you can do in here also is on your chimney, you can. Uh, I've given it a bit of a brightness and contrast just to crush the blacks a little, and also on the footage, I've put a little bit of color correction in there to darken us up a little bit as well. So that is it for the footage layer. The next thing we need to look at is the actual snow globe itself. Okay, so now for our actual globe itself. Now the way you wanna do this is you wanna create yourself two planes, both of them being cyan in color. And uh, what I've done, I've added two masks to this. The first mask being, let's turn that one off. Um, a complete circular mask, which is great, and uh, no, nothing else to it at all. I've then duplicated the same mask and given it this one. And what I've done, all I've done is changed the, the mode to be a subtract mask. I've put a minus 26 on the expansion, which brings the mask inwards. And I've also bumped the feather up to about 130. Now that gives it a nice sort of a glow around the outside of it. And then I've created another uh, plane, a cyan plane, and I've copied that mask onto it. So in here, you've got also a circular mask, cyan in color. With the first one, I've dropped the opacity down to 50%. So we go to transform opacity is 50% and then on the second one I've dropped the opacity right down to 10% just gives that faded look to it and then the final thing for for this there's no there's no effects on any of those I've dropped the green screen footage onto it which is our comp we did a minute ago and I all I've done is added a fisheye warp to it so if I turn that off um, Oh, yeah, first thing you need to do is drop a circular mask on it again. So copy the exact same mask from the other two layers. Drop it onto this one because that will just stop everything from outside the snow globe happening. So there we go. And then, like I said, I dropped on a fisheye warp and changed the amount to about 15. And all it does, it just bulges it slightly to give it a, a kind of a circular, you know, an impression that it's inside the, the globe itself. And then the last thing, drop the base onto the onto the shot and position position it uh, accordingly. And I've just dropped it at the bottom of my snow globe there. And that's this snow globe layer completed and ready for compositing into your scene. And what we can do there, I've I've created a couple of scenes. The first one being uh, main comp, there we go, which is the one from our Christmas video which is I just got a photograph and uh, to give it to give it a little bit more realism I've put a couple of lens flares on it to make it give it a bit more movement so it's not a static photograph so I've got a link I've got a, lens, a nice bright lens flare at the top of the Christmas tree I've got one on the top of the snow globe here um, which gives it sort of a little bit of a shine and then I've also put in some real fire just to make it come alive a bit more so the whole scene is just a bit more alive and I've also put a little animation on the two uh, lens flares to make them rotate ever so slightly as well so position all that into 3d space stick a camera on there put a camera move into it and you are away and there we are snow globe with the lens flare snow within the snow globe doing its stuff so there we have it that's the snow globe effect um, in hit film now you can have a bit of fun with this. I mean, I, I've created another one here, which is, you know, if it's not Christmas, you can put us inside a fiery snow globe, a fire globe, as, <laughs> as you might want to call it. Um, and that's exactly the same effect. I just played with the particle simulator a little, um, tinted it a little bit of a, a dark orange color, added some flames to it. You know, and, and the possibilities with this are endless. You can turn it into a crystal ball with people in there, or without anyone in there, you can just create a crystal ball kind of feel to it. Uh, it's entirely up to you. But as I always say, wherever I go, I, you know, no matter if I'm in a fire globe, a snow globe, I always seem to be stuck with Dean. 
oh well, never mind, life goes on. So that's how you put someone in a snow globe. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of How Did They Do That? And uh, next week, we're going to be taking a look at the floor smashing effect from episode three, The Hero Trial. So let's take a look at that clip now, and then we'll move on to the burning question of the week. Yeah, my main power is uh, superhuman strength. Superhuman strength? Yeah, and it's that. sort of something like this, really. Uh -huh. OK, Mr Nolan, the academy starts in four weeks, so we will see you there. Proper job. Thank you. And finally, the Sketchwork TV question of the week. What movie are you most looking forward to in 2012? Uh, leave your responses below or again on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. OK, so until next time, I'm Justin Heesman and we'll see you again on Sketchwork TV. How did they do that? Sketchwork TV.